It is the time of festival, and the city is all bedecked in her luminous glory. The palace has been lit and the streets festooned. People are out in their finery, celebrating the spirit of the Sher, the Shera, or the festival of lights that comes but once a year, but leaves an afterglow that lasts all of 12 months here. Pomp and pageantry marks an event whose present form dates back to the time of the Maharajas. And even in these times of democratic equalness, when more than half a century has elapsed since the last Maharaja climbed off his throne, all roads during the Shera still lead to the palace of the Wadiyas in the city of Mysore. Srikant Wadiyar, scion of a long line of royals, now ascends the Gaddi, or throne, of his forefathers, but once a year on the Shera day. When the Vijayanagar's empire was on the wane and the Europeans yet to march inland, the Wadiyars, small-time chieftains of the region, ignored the authority of Vijayanagar and carved a kingdom for their generations to come. A kingdom that was not only blessed with fertile soil and a temperate climate, but one which saw come to the throne some far-sighted and benevolent rulers, particularly those of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Rulers who incorporated the advancement of science and education into working for the greater good of their subjects. Mysore Maharaja was a uh, well thought and the combination of Samrita Ismail and Sri Krishna Vadir was a unique. Maharaja was a very interested person. He was a person to see beauties and he always wanted lighting. That is the reason why palace will find in lighting. Maharaj had about four cars. First time 1907. At that time we had two cars. Then later on four. Sometimes palace requires cars, they used to get our car, they used to get our drivers. Now you will see thousands of cars and lakhs of two-wheelers. We had the first car, Didi and Spanish Souza, French car, which was brought by Prince of Wales. Two cars had come. One Maharaja Mysore took it and one we took it. Asim Seth is 78 years old and he forms the link between the Mysore of old and the modern Mysore. Born much before independence, this old patriarch had once rubbed shoulders with the royal family, but found his true vocation in the service of the people, and later in politics. In acknowledgement of his efforts, he has a locality of Mysore named after him. A rehabilitation scheme that is named as the Asim Seth Nagar. Modern Mysore today has yet not managed to wipe away its links with the royalty. Though they now mostly house government offices, the palaces and buildings of Mysore present the visage of an early 20th century princely city. The civic architecture of Mysore is a blend of Indo-Sarsenic and the classical European, but there is one building in Mysore that stands apart from all else. 
a neo-Gothic structure that acts not only as a landmark visible from far and wide, but one which stands testimony to the secular nature of Mysore. In the 18th century, there was a small church here. This was known as St. Joseph's Church. Then Bishop René Fuga, then the parish priest and the Bishop of Mysore, built this Gothic church. He named this church as St. Philomena Church, or Cathedral, because several tourists come here and they had great devotion to St. Philomena's. So they, after that, in 1931 onwards, this cathedral is known as St. Philomena's Cathedral. The people from different regions, they have sent a lot of donations, uh, contributions those days, say 1930s something. All these names are inscripted in the catacomb there, St. Philomena's Catacomb. So you get about more than 5,000 names are inscripted there. The foundation stone was laid by late Maharaja and uh, the whole uh, the family has helped this to, for the construction of the church. Close to the imposing bulk of St. Philomena's Cathedral, Ishmael is busy working in his small one-room factory. Like the erstwhile rulers of Mysore, Sayyid Ishmael too has a long lineage. But it was not riches that Ishmael inherited, but the tools and knowledge of his forefathers. For he comes of a line of craftsmen who over centuries have created poetry out of wood. Poetry that has given to Mysore one of its recognizable trademarks and to generations of Ishmael's a source of livelihood. हमें ये के पास हमने ले गया वो काम को छोड़ा उसके पास हमें सीखे उसके बाद हमें करके काम काम करे कि नहीं कि उसके बाद हमारे बच्चे को हमें लोग आंगने जाने का ना करके हमें खास खोल को हमें अच्छा हमारे बच्चे को ट्रेनिंग दे को हमें खुद काम करके हमें बेच के माल ऐसा है हमें ले जाको दूसरी जगह बड़े Mysore had for long been the nucleus around which developed the indigenous culture of the Kannadigas, the people who spoke the Kannada language. When the state of Karnataka came into being in 1956, it was around the territory ruled by the kings of Mysore. But it was not Mysore that became the capital of the new state, but Bangalore, 110 kilometers away. Mysore remained the provincial town. A district headquarters that was steeped in history, Mysore escaped the mindless development that typified the second half of the century, while it retained most of the romanticism of the first. It was only in the 90s that the city actually began to change. Lot of differences. It has spoiled the beauty of Mysore. If you want to see really what Mysore is, Karan Park, Bodyguard, that that small bit, you see that uh, grandeur of Mysore. Total population of Mysore was about seventy-five thousand. Then I, as I grew up, I saw the population up to two lakhs. Today the population is about eight to ten lakhs. My impression of Mysore was that it was really a, a garden city as it was known to everybody. Uh, it was beautiful, green, lots of flowering trees, and uh, the roads may not have been as broad as they are now, but they were good roads. And the traffic, of course, wasn't at all, uh, you know, heavy. And uh, it was um, a very friendly, pretty city. The people got on very well. There was no discord between communities. Everyone celebrated their feasts in a very cultured way, enjoyed themselves. Sheila Irani had come to Mysore as a young bride. 
Having been born and brought up in an Anglo-Indian family in Pune, Sheila had married a Parsi and the young couple established a business in faraway Mysore. Now more than four decades since she became a resident, Sheila has fond memories of a city that had welcomed her with open arms. You could never forget Mysore. Once you, you love the city, you always, wherever you go in India or even abroad, you love to come back. Because there is something that draws you. It's a very strange feeling. And it draws you here. I don't know what it is. It's just uh, the peace, the quiet, and the meeting of old friends. That's so attractive. <laughs> While over the years the face of urban Mysore underwent a gradual change, there are areas and activities in and around the city that seem untouched by time. In small hamlets surrounding Mysore, life remains connected to the pale yellow cocoon of the silkworm. These are the satellite settlements. These are the satellite settlements whose inhabitants earn their living by tending and nurturing the silkworm. It is silk that had given Mysore its first industry and though there are big government cooperatives who hold sway over the business, silk still provides the means of a livelihood to the likes of 44-year-old Srikant and his family. The whole family participates in the daily chore of rolling the fine silk thread that would one day be woven into the famed Mysore silk saris. Saris that would adorn the bridal trousseau of many a woman from far and wide. Silk, uh, silk saris are the local customers. जो मतलब गरीब भी हो जो अमीर भी हो स्पेशल यहां के सिर्फ ज्यादा ही खरीदते हैं मतलब लोकल और थोड़े विलेजर्स के लोग भी वही लोग सिल्क की खरीदते हैं मतलब शादी में तो सिल्क साड़ी होना ही है ना वो हिसाब से ज्यादा सिल्क की खरीदते हैं वैसे मतलब बाहर से आते हैं लोग टूरिस्ट से मतलब आउट कंट्री से भी आते हैं वो लोग मटेरियल और सारीस यहां से मटेरियल भी लेके वहां पे जाके ड्रेस सिलाते हैं it is in another corner of Mysore that Zakir Bhai has his small bangle shop. Sayed Zakir Pasha's family have been residents of Mysore for as long as anyone can remember. His was a family that had survived at the lower end of society and it was only in the past decade or so that Zakir and his brothers had opened their small businesses. Having achieved some measure of economic stability, Zakir found the time and inclination to participate in a community sport that accorded him a further degree of social respectability. When I was 10 years old, no one knew me. Then I practiced my racing. Then I was doing a step by step. 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 तब से जब मैं लड़ने के आया प्रैक्टिस करने के आया तब मेरे को जानने लगे आदमी वहाँ से मेरा नाम इम्प्रूव होने के आया फिर मेरा नाम प्रोपागेंडा करे प्लान जाकिर बल जाकिर जाकिर बल के तब से मेरे को जानते हैं नहीं तो अगर जब मैं रेसलिंग प्रैक्टिस नहीं करता तो कोई नहीं जानते थे मेरे रेसलिंग स्कूल्स � but it is the youth belonging predominantly to the Muslim community who are the members and every morning in and around the mohallas of Mysore the youth arrive at their respective talims to practice and to share in the brotherhood the sport accords its practitioners. कपड़ा क्लॉथ यूज़ करना तो भी एक एक क्लॉथ से करते हैं हम हम सब मिलके हैं क्योंकि और जब बाहर होते हैं तो कोई फ्रेंड सर्कल लालाता रहते हैं मगर इधर ऐसा नहीं भाई भाई जैसा रहता है हर एक पसीना दूसरे पसीने को लगता है इसमें भाई भाई जैसा हम इस्तेमाल करते हैं 
प्रैक्टिस के लिए हम सब इकट्ठा होते हैं सब इकट्ठा होकर हम खूब प्रैक्टिस करते हैं जैसे अगर मेरा कॉम्पिटिशन हुआ तो हमारे पूरे लड़के हैं ना पूरे एक हो गया मेरे को प्रैक्टिस देते हैं ऐसा नहीं जाकिर भाई ऐसा नहीं ऐसा बोलो ऐसा करो बोल के तो मेरा हौसला बुलंद करते हैं While Zakir and his friends are busy wrestling, the higher echelons of Mysore society are also up early in the morning at the 110-year-old Royal Mysore Turf Club. Situated in the flats below the Chamundi Hills, the RMTC, which has always had a restricted membership, attracts not only the race jockeys and the stable owners, but also the golfing enthusiast. The Maharaja sold the property to the club in the year 1969. One of the conditions he had set forth was that Mysore Race Club should promote the game of golf, which we have been doing. We conduct annual tournaments and it attracts the cream of players from South India. And sometimes people come from as far as Assam. And in uh, 1989, the golf club, Jai Chamaraj Udiyar Golf Club has been formed. And now they are looking after the course, maintenance, etc. And uh, the government of India has tourism department has pumped in a lot of money and uh, the course has been upgraded to international standards. In the early years, the RMTC had been under the control of the Kings of Mysore and had been run on the lines of a private club. In 1968, the club became a limited company and from a mere 60 to 70 horses then, it grew in popularity and by the late 90s, more than 700 horses are taking part at the races here. Though smaller in size compared to the clubs of Calcutta, Mumbai or Bangalore, the Royal Mysore Turf Club is very much a part of the city and is also unique in at least one aspect. This uh, course was built in early 1900s. It's about 93 years old. The course was designed by an Australian architect. And it's designed as a monsoon architect. Even if it pours for two hours, within 20 minutes we can conduct racing. Unlike other race courses where once it rains, finished. You have to pack up. The club is taking efforts to market the game. And uh, there are plans around underway to telecast it live to the other cities in India as well as to neighboring countries like Sri Lanka. Then a lot of interest from Dubai where uh, advertisement revenue is bound to come in and that will grow, add to the growth of the city and the club in general. Thalavain Krishna completed his studies and left Mysore to seek his fortune in a foreign land. Having practiced medicine with a certain amount of success, Dr. Krishna married and lived a comfortable life in the U.S. for 20 years. But Mysore had always been special and he wanted to do something different. When I was in America, I saw how Ayurveda is spreading in the West and I felt it was very necessary to start a center in India which is of international standards, yeah. so we can represent Ayurveda globally. Mysore is very rich with history of Ayurveda. There are Ayurvedic colleges here. During the Maharaja's time, the, it was a very flourishing uh, system of medicine here. So there is a lot of cultural uh, tie-up and bondage for Ayurveda in Mysore. Ours is the only institution of uh, this standard in Mysore. There are many Ayurvedic uh, clinics and nursing homes and colleges and hospitals. So this is the difference we have, it's of the international standard. Life continues in Mysore as it follows a laid-back pattern. The inhabitants of the city go about their daily chores and life goes on. But life in Mysore had been irrevocably changed sometime in the first quarter of the 20th century when a small sweetmeat shop inaugurated their latest offering and Mysore Park was born.
ಮೈಸೂರು ಅಂತ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಮೈಸೂರು ಪಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಮೈಸೂರು ಪಕ್ಕು ಇದು ಸುಮಾರು ನೂರು ವರ್ಷಗಳ ಹಿಂದೆಯಿಂದನೂ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಇದನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮ ಮುತ್ತಾತನಾದಂಥ ಕಾಕಾಸುರ ಮಾದಪ್ಪನವರು ಆ ಅರಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿಹಿ ಪದಾರ್ಥಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಡುತ್ತಿದ್ದರು ಮಹಾರಾಜರುಗಳಿಗೆ ಅವಾಗಲಿಂದನೂ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಸರು ಪ್ರಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಈ ಮೈಸೂರು ಪಾಕನ್ನ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಆವಾಗ ಮಹಾರಾಜರಿಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಾತ ಅವರು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಡ್ತಿದ್ರು ನಾವು ಈ ಅರಮನೆ ಆದ ಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಾತ ಅವರು ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ಟರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮೈಸೂರು ಪಾಕು ಪ್ರಸಿದ್ಧಿಯಾಗಿ ಸುಮಾರು ಆರು ವರ್ಷ ವರ್ಷಗಳ ಮೇಲೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಈ ಮೈಸೂರು ಪಾಕ್ ಮೇನ್ ಪ್ರಿಪ್ರೇಷನ್ಗೆ ಬೇಕಾದಂಥ ಪದಾರ್ಥ ಸಕ್ಕರೆ ಕಡಲೆ ಇಟ್ಟು ಬೆಣ್ಣೆ ಕಾಯಿಸಿದ ತುಪ್ಪ ಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತೆ From this small rudimentary kitchen, Kumar and his two brothers continue to keep their family's tryst with the palate of Mysore. More than 30 kilos of the sweet is sold every day from their small shop in the center of town. And every day, people throng to buy their quota of the heady sweet. A sweet that aptly took its name from the city of its birth. A sweet that is reflected in the nature of the city's inhabitants. <laughs> 